All right, guys, the second game, the second series in the World Championship um, between King Mustafa against DJ Premier, the best of three, elves against dwarves on the map Westworld is all about to begin. King Mustafa has the upper hand now in the group stage as he was already able to win against Lukat 2-0. Now, if he wins also against DJ Premier, he will be pretty much advanced already to the next round. On the right side, we have the Dwarf player DJP, and on the left side, his opponent is the Red Elven player King Mustafa. So, Elves against Dwarves, both factions, both, both players were pre-picking the factions, so they didn't pick random. Let's see. Dwarves against Elves. May the best Dwarf win. Uh, Malon 3, this game is not lagging that much, because we have already tried to get a game between those two players. I don't know about that, man. That's really interesting. What, what is that? Okay. Yielding a Malon tree in the middle of the map. I mean, it makes kind of sense against dwarves because they're going to attack your side of the map all the time. So if you can hide those uh, Malon trees in obvious places like that, you know, maybe you need to hide them where he's not going to look at them. You know what I'm saying? So potentially the dwarf player is not going to move through the middle. He's going to try to attack you from those side lanes all the time with those mineshafts. So building Malon trees all around the map kind of would make sense. Let's see if this is gonna work out for the Alvin player King Mustafa. Uh, DJ Premier is gonna start with those pikemen. He's gonna potentially go for the creep here. Um, or what you also can do, I mean, Alvin player can do that. Oh, okay. So I see two Malon trees, three Malon trees into the stable in the front. Okay, that might be. I mean, that's really risky from King Mustafa, guys, because. DJ Premier is now gonna start with Pikeman. He's gonna group and uh, he's gonna creep this work layer first. And I think he's gonna wait then for like two more guardians and then go for a push. Two guardians and a pikeman. So if he positions the pikeman nicely around his units, he should be able to protect him, protect the guardians, I mean, against the lancers from Rivendell. And with that being said, the first attack from DJP might be very, very successful. He's gonna go offensive, by the way, at the top left side of the map, Westfold, and Totsia, thank you so much for the follow by the way, thank you so much, and welcome to the stream. Uh, when you plan to go offline today, I can't really tell, I think we're gonna have this series at least, potential, I'm, I'm online, I'm, I have time today guys, I can stay a bit longer, um, we might be able to get more series today, if not, that might be the last games, what we're gonna stream today, but we're gonna definitely be back tomorrow, with some more tournament games, as we have already some confirmed tournament games tomorrow between C Knight um, against Black Hawk. Then we will have the games between Maximus against Andy Sun. Those games they are scheduled for tomorrow. Okay, uh, was able to get inside the mineshaft with those guardians, which is really good. The builder is also getting inside the mineshaft. The mineshaft is gonna be taken down though. It's gonna creep now the second work there with those level two pikemen. Uh, let me check if he has any mine shafts around this area. The answer is no, at least for now. He's gonna make more pikes after seeing those Revander Lancers from King Mustafa. By the way, it was a stable delete. It was a stable delete, but after two Lancers and not a one, not one Lancer only. So he has indeed uh, two Lancer Battalions on the field, which is something which we don't see that quite often, guys. Right? We see only one Lancer demolish, but he's kind of lucky that uh, DJP wasn't able to attack him just yet. But yeah, let's see. Uh, we need to keep an eye on those builders from DJ Premier. Uh, because he's gonna try, obviously, to build mineshafts close to the side of his opponent. The pikemen are able to deal with those lancers, not a big deal. He's losing so many lancers here, I don't know if it's worth it to take down this mineshaft for that. And committing too much. He almost lost the entire battalion, almost lost both of them actually. Yes, he was able to take down the mineshaft, but now we have level 2 and even level 3 pikemen on the field from the dwarf player DJ Premier. He's spamming more pikemen, so that's gonna be his third battalion, and he has two guardians inside that. So with that being said, he will have five battalions ready to push from this area. This this Malon tree is gonna be taken down first. We have also King Brent joining the fight. The Lancers are doing a great job, and the mineshaft here will be taken down once again. Okay, it looks like he doesn't want to give up this mineshaft again, so he's gonna fight for it. Gonna go for the attack potentially. More units are coming. 
Rallying Call is still available for the Dwarf player, but also for the Elven player King Mustafa. He has now two Archer Battalions on the field. Will they be enough to defend this? King Brand, once he's level 2, will be unlocking the Slam Shot. Rallying Call will be used now from the Dwarf player DJ Premier. He's going for the attack. And Fluffy Dutch guy, thank you so much for the follow, man. Appreciate it. Welcome to the stream. Okay, this Malone tree is gonna be taken down. The builder has to be careful from the Dwarf player, by the way. But it looks like he's not gonna get attacked, at least for now. Splitting his units. Um, doesn't have too many units. He also end up losing this Mineshaft here to those Lorian warriors. This Mineshaft is also gonna be taken down. I mean, King Mustafa is doing a great job scouting the area all the time, guys. Level 2, Slam Shot is available, can be used on those Lorian Arches, will be used on them, nice one, hitting level 3 immediately. Needs to move with those pikemen, should be able to get into the backline, but King Mustafa is now moving with his archers, and he actually didn't lose too much. Rebuild was used on this mineshaft to keep it alive, the Lancers, they gotta disengage, and he will be barely able to get away. Uh, wait a second, hold on a second, did he lose one of these Lancer battalions? Because I see only one on the field for now, I might be wrong. But yeah, he actually lost one of the battalions. That's the only battalion he has left. And they are only level 1. And the Alvin player doesn't have a well just yet. But Haldir is joining the fight. And he will also be able to save the Smalon tree in the backside of his fortress. Dwarf player is building a statue here in front of the barracks. Haldir is using the sword. I don't know about that. Really? Is, you want to really commit to that King Brent? Is this not too risky, boys? I think it is. King Mustafa has to be careful here. Does he have heal and he's trying to beat him? He doesn't even have, have uh, he doesn't even have the power points for heal, but he's really close for that. He might be forced to pick it. Now he has the power points he needs. He's definitely gonna go for the heal. Should potent potentially go for the heal. Nice slam shot once again from the King Brand. And it looks like the barracks is gonna be taken down. We have 500 command points for the Alvin player still. It's gonna drop a bit less now as he's gonna lose this Malon tree. He has some Malon trees at the bottom left side, which is good. Uh, he went for the heal and used the heal already. King Brent is taking way too much damage and has to retreat now. He might be even able to, sa uh, to save the barracks here, which is gonna be the case. Nice one. King Brent is still being attacked. Oh, he's being body blocked by his own units. Will he die? Will he die? Will he die? Will he die? Will he... One more hit. Oh my god, did he kill him? No, he didn't, but he died on the on the other side. What a what a beat! Oh my goodness! He wanted to he committed fully to kill the King Brand with the Haldir, but you know he died himself, and King Brand was able to survive. And now finishing those Lancers off. I don't know if this is skill or just pure luck, boys. The Varax has been taken down as well. Another slam shot. He was used to get King Brand healthy again. 475 for King Mustafa. He has no more units on the field besides this almost dead battalions of archers and Lorian warriors. On the other side, DGP is coming in clutch in the game number one as dwarves against elves on the map Westfold. He has rebuilt, heal, rallying call, 660 command points collected. That's amazing. And yeah, the power of dwarves. And kinda lucky also, not gonna lie. <laughs> oh no. The barracks is gonna be taken down again. They are now being also buffed from the rallying call. I mean, dwarven units, as you know, they are also dealing a lot of damage to the enemy structures anyway. It's down now. Mustafa has nothing left on the field anymore. And also Haldir has been taken down. He's gonna call it GG. And what an incredible start into the series from the player from UK. But we have at least one more game to go. The game number 2, this time Dwarves against Goblins on the map for Two of Ice and DJ Premier has the lead and if he wins this one, he ha he's gonna have the same amount of points like King Mustafa has as Mustafa was able to win already 2-0 against Lukat. Okay, let's do it. On the left side we have the purple Goblin player DJ Premier and his opponent on the right side is the red Dwarf player King Mustafa, who was playing uh, with the Elven faction in the previous game against Dwarves from DJ Premier. Okay, I see Mineshafts coming up for the Dwarf player. And I see Goblin Caves coming up for DJP. Rallying Call and, uh, you know, Goblin player potentially gonna start with the Cave Bats. I mean, uh, with the Warchant anyway. This is a really snowballing matchup. 
Um, while the dwarves are looking for this all-out fights because they have the power advantage and, you know, their units are stronger, I think Goblin player will try to attack from multiple angles at the same time. Try to keep up the pressure. Don't look for those all-out fights unless you are able to outnumber your opponent's army big time because you will lose those early skirmishes Goblin against Guardians in a 1v1 situation. That's why we're potentially gonna see a Spider Pit coming up. Okay, Spider Pit coming up. No Goblin spam. No Goblin Cave start. Spider Pit. So we're gonna see those little Spiderlings running, kind of flying all around the map, trying to harass the opponent Mineshafts. Let's see how effective they are, going, uh, they are going to be. And we're gonna have Pikeman start here from King Mustafa. So Mustafa has actually many, many choices on this map, I would say, right? So you can potentially go for the War Creep here. Also, what you can do is creep the Troll Creep at the top right side. Because those Dwarven Pikemen are pretty strong. And they can do that also solo without the help of the builder. Um, Spiderlings are gonna be very annoying to deal with. They are really strong. I mean, they are not very strong units in 1v1 situations. They are still doing a great job against Guardians. Can't fight those pikemen and they are also really weak against those units. So Man of Deal, they're gonna one-shot them. But I feel like he's gonna spam Extroverse now. Extrover Guardian and Extroverse, unlike Archers, they are also dealing significant amount of damage. To the enemy buildings so we shall see spider pit level one goblin keef is coming up for djp on the left side and he still didn't pick any powerpoint just yet from the spellbook um pikemen are inside the mineshaft still so they can potentially come out here and they should be easily able to defend this mineshaft against those spider links but he is creeping i think he's gonna creep at the bottom left side yeah, which is gonna be the case. Um, but, you know, actually, let me check the vision control from the dwarf player. Does he see this troll cage, or troll creep in this case? A nice one, nice micro here from King Mustafa. If the troll is going back, he won't be able to attack you. But now he should be able to see the troll, so he was able to see him, I guess. Yeah, he was able to see him. That means he might potentially be able to steal at least a treasure, but it's not. it looks also like he's not reacting to that play. Okay, well, he's gonna attack now from this side, by the way. With this level 2 pikeman units. And extrovers. Guardian, extrover, and pikeman. A one goblin archer should not be enough to defend this. Look, they are getting one-shotted. Rallying call was used from King Mustafa. Spiderlings in the meantime were able to creep this uh, work layer at the bottom right side. During all this time, Mustafa was untouched. He didn't lose anything. And he will keep spamming those extrovers all the time. Six power points collected, I mean one power point collected, the fact that he didn't pick anything just yet. So he de he definitely needs something like, I mean he can still go for the cave beds, but I would say rallying, uh, war chant is gonna be more, or maybe even uh, tainted land could be a great choice. On top of that defensively. So you can have the buff remaining on the field also for the units coming out later. Extrovers are fighting against those spider links, they are level 2. And it looks like they are winning this fight as well. Okay, Warchan was picked by the way. He's gonna definitely use it defensively. Otherwise, he's potentially gonna lose every single structure he has on the field. 500 command points, 350 command points only for the Goblin player DJ Premier. Okay, uh, we have a second Hall of Warriors coming up. That's gonna be his third production building. So this time he's not gonna go for the Battle Wagon action like he did against Lukat. Uh, with the main of deal because battle wagons if you didn't know they are very weak against spider links spider links are able to chase them catch them and take them down really fast this tunnel has been taken down uh, but again you know that's a win-win situation right there because he was still able to take down the tunnel he was also able to take down this tunnel here and then he was also able to force his opponent to use the war charm defensively and during all this time he himself is untouched all the time Oh, okay, he went, he cancelled the Hall of Warriors, or, I think so. Or did he go for the Forge work at the beginning, I can't even tell. So he's gonna go for the Battle Wagon, definitely. Uh, with the double buff action, the Mineshaft has been taken down, but he was able to get out with many, many units. Oh, the Builder has been actually taken down. Yeah, the Builder from the Dwarf player King Mustafa is down now, that's actually very good. If he can defend his attack, and he might be able to, because they don't have Rallying Call anymore, it's still on cooldown. And he has so many Goblin Archers. That might be enough to force them back. 
It looks like King Mustafa is trying to retreat and he will try to enter this mineshaft. But hobbits are also coming from this inn at the bottom left, bottom left side. We have, for now, 500 command points collected for King Mustafa. 3 power points available. 500 command points also for DJ Premier. He has more power points collected. He has cave beds now also ready to be used. Which can be a great counter against the battle wagons with the Benakiri upgrade. If he, go if he goes for it. Uh, against Lukat he was always... You know, getting the Man of Deal on them. Let's see what's gonna be his choice this time. Uh, Mustafa is committing to that fight. Battle Wagon is coming and he's gonna go for the Banner Carry upgrade. Again, the Keef Pads are negating the leadership effect. But they are also being attacked here from those Extrovers. If he's not paying attention, he will lose those bats. They are very low now. Yes, they're gonna be taken down. Now they have a leadership advantage here. Did he use also rallying call? Yes, he did. So double buffed units, but the spiderlings, that's what I meant, heal just in time. Spiderlings, they gotta retreat. They are getting taken down. Double buff, you don't want to fight against that with no buff, because Warchan is still be being on cooldown. And the fact that he lost the key pads to the extroverse means the effect of the leadership can't be negated. He's gonna get some half troll pikemen on the field, by the way. Spider Pit is still level 1 and he's playing with two goblin caves. Again, really important to mention. Mustafa is untouched all game long and he really needs to try to go for a counter attack at least use those spider links for little harassments all the time and try to you know buy some time because this attack I mean this attack might be protected or defended because he will have now buff Warchan is ready obviously and rallying call is gonna be on cooldown so leadership is not as effective as the buff from the Warchant and he has also now some half troll pikemen on the field they are quite tanky as we know so, yeah, let's see. This tunnel is gonna be taken down next. He has a bunch of goblin archers. He needs to use the war chance. Okay. Poison blades, maybe? Oh, he was not using it on this battle wagon. No more heal available for King Mustafa. But in this situation, you can see the quality goes over quantity. As long as he can keep this battle wagon alive, I think he should be good to go. Uh, but he's making the mistake to focus down those. Pikeman units, he's still being able to kill them. Oh, Oil Barrel, he is gonna be forced to disengage here. He's taking damage over time. Battle Wagon is being the target from those spider links. Nice micro here from King Mustafa. Body blocking those spider links with his extroverse and hobbits. And Battle Wagon surviving so long. Uh, he's fully committing to that now. Will be able finally to take it down, but he lost so many units in the meantime. 650 command points for King Mustafa against 575. For DJ Premier. They have a level 5 Hobbit Battalion, ladies and gentlemen. What the heck? Hey, Vulkat, my dude, welcome to the stream. Okay, nice one. Uh, what is happening here? We have Spiderlings finally harassing a little bit. Hey, I am. Uh, I am Negan. Thank you so much for the follow, man. Appreciate it. Welcome to the stream. Okay, boys. He keeps attacking all the time. I mean, what DJ Premier needs to try, he needs to fight for the map control because look how many mine shafts he has pretty much uncontested. If you end up defending yourself only against dwarves, you will never be done with defending because he will always keep the pressure up and he doesn't need to walk. He can just, you know, use those mine shafts to get those units instantly at your side of the map. I mean, even if Mustafa wins this one, we have still a tiebreaker game in the best of three. Uh, but winning that game for Mustafa means a lot because he was already able to win 2-0 against Lukat. So even if he wins only one game against DJ Premier, he will have three wins, which is going to increase his chances to enter the next round and go to the best of 16. Me too, my friend. Me too. Okay. Bunch of units here. Um, he's gonna go for attack. Is rallying call ability available? Yes, it is. He has eight power points collected. Can go for the Hobbit soon with two more power points. He has such a massive lead in terms of command points as well. But on the bright side, we have nearly ten power points collected for the Goblin player DJ Premier. He might go for, um, I think you know, Spider Allies potentially. Um, they are gonna be great. I mean, he needs to really try to de deal damage here to those structures. He has now two level two mine shafts. A three level two mine shafts, you know, being untouched pretty much all the time. Um, okay, 
Yes, half the swordsman on the field, couple of goblin archers finally going for the attack, 10 power points collected now. Yes, Warchan and Keith Bats available. The builder from the goblin player uh, is also around this area. Okay. That's a huge army, by the way, from King Mustafa. And if he micros them well enough, I think he can deal such a massive damage. 11 power points collected by DJ Premier. 9 power points almost collected now for King Mustafa. Power points are rising, obviously. He was able to deal with those extroverts. He has still 3 spiderling units around. He finally goes for harassment. He needs to take down those mineshafts. They are unprotected. Rallying was used. A big push is incoming with double buff action. One of them has also Man of Deal on them, by the way. Keith Bats, however, are ready. So can negate the leadership. But is this gonna be enough? To win that fight. half throw Swordsman, yes, but they have, he has so many Hobbits, he has so many Extrovers and so much Frontline to protect them and keep them alive. Hobbit Allies will be chosen, Spider Allies is also available for the Goblin player DJ Premier. He might be forced to use it defensively, even though I don't think they're gonna be very impactful to defend his attack. So I would still see that more, you know, being used offensively to deal finally some damage to the Eco from the dwarf player azok is on the field trying his hardest to do something but the keith bats are again taken down azok has pillage with level 2 you get some money from killing those units level 4 is gonna be needed for the great battle rage to be unlocked spider ally is still available he can't use it because i think he's not gonna achieve a lot with this when he's gonna use it offense uh, defensively i mean during all this time he should be using it already, but he's gonna use it now. Where is he gonna use it? Uh, here in the middle of the map. So let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. But pikemen are already here from King Mustafa, ready to defend this mineshaft. Will this be enough? He keeps attacking, by the way. He's not done yet, boys. Extrovers are here. He's gonna commit to the forge works or pot potentially to the mineshaft. He's gonna be able to take it down. But he loses so much more than that. So much more than that. We have 550 command points still because he has some of these tunnels in the middle of the map, which is good. Um, and the dwarf player has 550 because he lost this mineshaft. Imagine him losing this two also, you know, he would be really behind. To losing this two means losing 150 more command points. So his command points kept already. Um, that means he won't be able to make units to defend himself beside these two units he has. Uh, but spiders, they are getting killed from the fortress. Only one is remaining and he won't be able to take it down. But spider links are coming to finish it off though. Azok is level 3 still, has to be careful, he's quite low. Um, still committing to that fight, which is a bad idea. Battle wagons are far away, they can't even buff them. They're quite healthy. They don't need to be scared. Uh, Azok really close to level 4. And that's what I meant. Look at this command points now from King Mustafa. His command points kept still, by the way. And there is this level 2, almost level 3 mineshaft. If he can take it down, it would be huge. This game isn't over yet. But the problem is, he lost every single production building besides this fissure. So he has no uh, goblin cave anymore. And the spider pit has been just taken down as well. So he has to rebuild that. But look, you know, he was already able to camp here, three mineshafts, a tower, just to keep up the pressure all the time. Um, he has still units around this area, the goblin player can't deal with them at this point. Azok is very low, but he finally hits a level 4. That means great battle rage is unlocked. Let's see, he's gonna use it now. Mirandi, welcome. A lovely welcome to the stream. No, that's the second game of the group stage for the world championship. The first one was between uh, King Mustafa against Lukat. He was able to win 2-0. Now it's between King Mustafa from, and against DJ Premier. DJP is leading 1-0 so far, but this game is looking heavily in favor of the dwarf player King Mustafa. The build has been taken down. I mean, that's what I want. That's what I want to say. At some point of the game, if you are being that behind, you performing really well is not going to be enough to win you the game. So you really, you really need to rely on the opening mistakes, and this is one of them. You know, leaving this side unprotected is one of them. So if Mustafa keeps making these mistakes all the time, he might give DJP enough time and space, and that's what I mean. He almost lost the second build as well. 
to win the game, actually. And, you know, to give him a great comeback potential. Alright, he's gonna commit again. He was also using Warchan on those fighter links, by the way. They are looking for those sneaky mineshafts. There is one here, level 2. This one was already able to hit level 3. Forge works. And we, have, we are getting more battle wagons on the field. He has still some units here in the middle of the map. But, you know, the more time passes through, the more units DJP is also gonna get on the field. And he has still, you know, decent amount of command points. Without any borrow expansion around it. Um, you know, he's, look his money. He has actually a decent amount of money collected. He has almost 14 power points as well. So it's not looking that bad for DJP at all. We have 14 power points now collected for Mustafa. He can go for the barrage ability after the Hobbits. Which can be used in combination, like against Lukat in the previous games, um, to kill the enemy army and to damage his structures at the same time. Okay. Um, almost 15 power points collected. He's gonna be able to push through this middle. Uh, but he needs to take care of this area as well. There is a tower which is pretty much unprotected, there is only one hobbit inside. But it looks like he doesn't want to waste time and commit to that. He was already able to clean all those um, mine shafts around that. And now he has the upper hand. He has 15 power points collected. And it looks like Mustafa was forced to go for the rebuild. Okay, so he's gonna be behind a bit. He has 550 command points only against 575. And I can't see his battle wagons on the field anymore. Those spiderlings, they were finally doing such a great job. They might be able to take down this Mineshaft level 3 as well, by the way. And yeah, he's winning that fight. Even Riding Cole was used here in the middle. But more reinforcements are coming now from EG Premier. And yeah, that's crazy actually. He was so behind and Worm will be summoned. He's gonna be able to take down this level 2 archer range. That's massive. Did he even manage to get any men of Dale on the field? Not even yet. So losing that means a lot. And this, you know, when you're playing dwarves and or goblins and you lose your builders all the time, it's gonna hurt you so much. So much. Just reposition. I think you don't need to fight the army, try to kill the enemy structures. This is one of the most, if not the most important mineshafts Mustafa has left on the field. Yeah, he's now building some of them at the bottom left side. Also used, uh, by the way, he went for the Dwarven Riches boys and was using that on the bottom left side. Which is smart, because, you know, it's gonna take, obviously, the Goblin player a bit, a lot of time to scout this mine shop at the bottom left side, because he's now busy attacking from the middle. The Worm is gone, but he was able to take down the barracks. Uh, no more Hall of Warriors left for King Mustafa. And he was even having the rebuild, but it doesn't make any sense, I would say, to use it against the Worm, because Worm is bursting it down like crazy. Hobbits are gonna be ready to defend. 7 power points almost collected, a bunch of units here, 725 command points now, with only one burrow expansion, so he's getting only 75 from that. He has still 650 himself against uh, 550. Uh, imagine Mustafa, I mean, imagine DJ Premier being able to see this mineshaft here at the bottom left side. It's, this would be really unlucky for King Mustafa, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but let's see. Okay, Hobbits will be used defensively. He's trying to commit to that fortress. We have also got to kill the Goblin King on the field, level 1. He offers you a double buff action with level 4, by the way, with the totem and with the leadership. Spider Ally Summon will be used to kill those mineshafts. Again, this is really important for King Mustafa to keep alive. Um, Rebuild was used on the, on the tower, and he actually manages to kill so many units. He also, you know, purchased the forge blades on this tower. Enforcing those spiders from the summon back to deal with it, actually. So he's killing some time, pretty much. During all this time, he is trying to push back from the top right side. So they are fighting and switching the sides all the time. While the goblin player is trying to clean everything from his opening at the bottom left side. You know, so does the dwarf player at the top right. And he will be able to take down a couple of these uh, tunnels. This game isn't over yet, but, you know, it's now bet looking much, much better for DG Premier. And it was looking like five minutes ago. That's what I mean. I think uh, Mustafa made a couple of mistakes. Like losing, I think he lost like three builders this game. He lost like many, many battle wagons. Uh, and kind of left his side of the map wide open for DJP to deal massive damage. The spider ally summon here, you know, he was able to take down two mine shafts. Was actually very impactful. You have still um, this battle wagons alive. This one is almost level two. 
I mean, this game is not over yet. He's still getting a decent amount of money from this mineshaft at the bottom left side. It's still unseen. It's gonna hit level 3 soon. We have 575 CP against 700 CP. 9 power points after the worm and 9 power points after the dwarven riches for the dwarf player King Mustafa. He's gonna go for the well now, finally. But he needs to do something about the map control. Goblin player is trying to get under his control. Gorkil is level 1, still. Level 2 is gonna be needed for the Skull Totem, which is not only giving you the stats from Warchant, it means 50% increased damage and armor, but it also gives you fear resistance, which can be very useful in some certain matchups. Maybe not that much against dwarves, but definitely really great against elves with the Cloud Break and Golden Arrow from Haldir against Mordor with the Drama Troll, you know what I'm saying, right? Screech from the Fell Beast. So it can be very, very useful many many different situations he's gonna move now from the bottom left side this tunnel is gonna be taken down i mean you can see the the mobility of those two factions actually quite insane boys quite insane 150 viewers by the way poke champ guys thank you so much for tuning in man really means a lot to me every match is best of five this match is best of three and uh, the group stage matches are always best of three and then the round of 16 is gonna be best of 5, the semi-finals is gonna be best of 7, and the finals is gonna be best of 9. Okay? So actually he's forced to retreat now, boys. Like, go all the way back to defend his tunnels. Uh, thank you so much for the follow. Peace, dude. Appreciate it. Welcome to the stream, dude. Right. Means a lot to me. And did I miss a, a sub? I did miss a sub, guys. Holy moly, critical. My friend, thank you so much for the sub with the Twitch Prime. I missed it. I'm a terrible streamer. <laughs> thank you so much. Means a lot to me. Means a lot. Okay, boys. So 725 CP for the Dwarf player. He's actually coming back. Dwarven Riches is going to be available soon again. This mineshaft is going to hit level 3 soon. 14 power points collected. Nice oil bottles here in the middle of the map. We have 825 command points for DJP. But he has now two battle expansions. He's getting 150 from these, as you know. And King Dane 32 thank you so much for the follow as well. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, almost 12 power points, boys. But he's gonna use the Man of Tail with double buff. No, not double buff. They have only the leadership for now. Because Rallying Call is still on cooldown. But... The Man of Deal Archer Summon is the strongest form of Archer Summon in the game. It's much more powerful than the Archer Summon with those uh, Donadine Rangers from the Man of the West because they will have always fire to upgrade. That also means you're not gonna be only, you know, dealing much more damage to the enemy units, but you're also gonna be able to take down the structures from your opponent really fast. Especially when the Rallying Call is gonna be ready, watch the damage output from those Man of Deal. But during all this time, look at this, everything is getting killed and cleaned up at the side of the Dwarf player. The, the fortress is actually protectless, and he might be able to commit to that. Um, this guy is level 2, I mean Gorkil is level 2, Man of Deal summon, he can use the totem here to give them buff as well. Oh, and that's gonna be the case, boys. Is he gonna commit to the fortress, and is he gonna be able to take it down? Remember, Reveal is still available for King Mustafa. So it can be used to delay, but he needs to react now. He might lose the fortress even with the rebuild being available, which is gonna be used now. But the damage output is quite insane. Rallying Call is still available, and thank you so much for the for the sub, man. Appreciate it. Welcome. Oh my God, guys, you are crazy. Thank you so much for the support. Really means a lot to me. Can't they just subscribe? And the fortress, even with the rebuild, is gonna be taken down, ladies and gentlemen. That is crazy. Black Wolf, thank you so much for the follow as well. Welcome to the stream. Okay, boys, what a game. And Uzun, Göktash, Gökber, thank you so much for the follow as well. Appreciate it. Such a great game here from DJP. Back and forth all the time. So far, the best game that we have seen in this tournament. But this is, you know, just the second series. So we're gonna see many more amazing and incredible games. And, you know, it was a great comeback. Because, let's be honest, DJ Premier was behind all the time. And, yeah, that's crazy. Maybe the Man of Deals should be summoned defensively. If 
this would be the case, the man of the deal with the leadership of the battle wagon and the buff from rallying call would be much, you know, more than enough to defend the fortress. This level 3 mineshaft is also gonna be taken down. 750 CP for the goblins, 550 for the dwarf player. He has actually, look his money boys, he has around 4k resources collected already. That's dope. I mean, he has command points kept. It's not like he has any more units on the field. Look how many units he has. So he might be even able to rebuild the fortress. It's funny to say that, but this game isn't over yet, boys. That's crazy. This game isn't over yet. Time for Pikachu. Let's go. Crazy. Looks pretty over to you. I don't know, man. I don't know. The worm is gonna be ready, yeah. Uh, but look, he has not many units on the field anymore. Don't underestimate the unit advantage King Mustafa has. He has so many men of the hill. Spider allies is on cooldown now. And the money from uh, King Mustafa is looking pretty dope as well. Look at this. He has almost enough for the for the fortress. Which is gonna cost 5,000 as you know. That's dope. And the goblin player doesn't have that, that much money anymore. He's gonna be forced to use the... Keith pads for the vision. Oh, he's gonna use worm anyway. So he's gonna be able to take down this um, level 2 archer range. I mean, the production buildings are gonna be potentially all die. But at the same time, you know what? You know what? He's rebuilding the fortress. Somewhere. Somewhere he's rebuilding the fortress. I don't know where it is, but somewhere he's rebuilding it. Wait. No. Don't tell me that. Where is he rebuilding the fortress? In top? Oh, I, I was, I was for a second, I was really afraid. Imagine you rebuild the fortress here, you forget to cancel, and the worm is able to take it down. <laughs> that would be like, a, I would rich quit the game immediately. But the fortress is coming up, boys. We have seen so many great comebacks also without a fortress. Um, and he has still, you know, like a lot of units on the field. Yes, he lost the production buildings, but... It's not like he has no more no more units on the field, or it's not like he has no more money. He has still a decent amount of command points, some of those mineshafts being level 2. He has this one at the bottom left side being level 3. Nice protection here, build the archer range, he's gonna build a hall of warriors now at the bottom left side as well. As a tower as protection for the fortress, which is already at 60%. The dwarf player, I mean the goblin player has worm, spiders and wildman of Dunland on cooldown. And he even went for the scavenger for the extra resource income he needs. Um, yeah, I mean the thing is, if the fortress comes up, he will be having all the power point abilities back available. Dwarven riches was almost ready if I'm not mistaken. So it can be used pretty much instantly. He is being able to clean those mineshafts now with the Gorkil, the goblin king who is level 4, has leadership unlocked. Um, Azok is here. Battle wagons are still doing a great job. Azok is, by the way, level 7. The fortress is almost up, boys. It's almost up. But he's losing now those mineshafts. He, he, there is nothing he can do about at this point. You need to give up those this side. But the fortress is up, and that means his power points are gonna be back available soon. I mean, uh, I'd lied because the Warwind Riches is still on cooldown for a while, Man of Deal the same, but he has collected 19 power points already afterwards. And this area is kinda nicely protected, so he will need a lot of units to commit to that side. Um, I mean, here's Azokto with Great Battle Reach, Haftro Swordman, we have seen them taking down those towers really fast, and now even with the potential double buff, because God Kill gives also leadership to those Haftro Swordman, right? They can, I think, Take down these towers within seconds. All of Warriors is coming up, the second one at the bottom left side. Mustafa has to, to, has to do something about the map control, because... Um, actually, even now, he has 625 command points available. I mean, that's pretty dope. He has such a gro uh, map control at the top right side. I mean, at this point, he's just building mineshafts pretty much only for the command points. But, yeah, still. 20 power points collected. Four power points collected. Rogorev, thank you so much for the follow, by the way. Welcome to the stream. Means a lot, man. Thanks. Okay, boys. Um, yeah, double Man of Deal. I mean, the double uh, Battle Wagon. One with the Banner Carrier, one with the Man of Deal. Level three and a half already. 
Hobbits, they need to do something. Just put on the swords and try to take down some of those tunnel tunnels. He's doing that also at the middle of the map, being able to fight back. There is still this uh, skull totem on the ground. It's gonna be there forever until it gets destroyed, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and the gob goblin player is actually struggling to finish off the game because he keeps losing stuff all the time. Maybe upgrades should be the way to go. Wildman of Dunland will be summoned. Oh, Wildman of yeah, Wildman of Dunland on top of the enemy units, but Battlebagon can clean that up actually, and that's gonna be the case. Scavenger is coming in clutch. Whenever he kills enemy units, he's gonna get money. Will this be enough to kill this area? That's gonna be the question. If yes, this could be very effective. Might not be enough to win the game after that, but taking down this level 3 mineshaft, all the production buildings and those two towers, that could, that, yeah, and that's gonna be the case. He is fully committing to that fight. Spider allies will be summoned. Watch the level 3 mineshaft burning in two seconds. Okay. Oh, I take it back. Cloud break time, baby. And where is the god kill the Goblin King with his Skull Totem? Where is the fear resistance when we need it? Yes, it's here. He, ha he didn't use it. Uh, if he would have used it, this Cloud Break wouldn't affect him at all. But Cloud Break was able to buy enough time, but still he ended up losing the level 3 Mineshaft. He might be able to defend this afterwards, because Men of Teal are doing a great job here in the back. But, you know, the main target from the Goblin player was obviously this level 3 uh, mineshaft at the bottom left side. And now he has 900 command points available. Uh, Armory is up on the field. He's gonna build now some lumber mills to get more money. And the great thing about the scavenger is he's gonna get money pretty much all the time. But on the other side, we have uh, 12 power points almost collected. He was forced to go for the cloud break. Um... He might lose, you know, he, he would potentially lose everything if he wouldn't go for it. It was a risky play, which could be countered by the Skull Totem, but DJP didn't go for it. Dwarven Riches is going to be available soon. In the meantime, he was also able to build multiple mine shafts around this area, as you can see. So he has still 875 command points. Uh, interesting game. The Fortress is down normally, like 9 out of 10 times the game would be over, but also before that. <laughs> Battlewagon is chasing him down. Will this can he kill him though? He's they are not dealing damage to Gorkil, I mean to Azog at all. Oh Hobbits were able to finish him off, but one battle wagon is gonna be taken down. Is it really worth it? Maybe it is, I don't know. Taking down a level a highly leveled Azog for one battle wagon, maybe it's worth. Um okay, the spider links are chasing down this battle wagon with the man of deal he's level four and a half by the way we have some spiders pressuring the map at the bottom right side at the same time dwarven riches gonna be available within the next 30 seconds if i'm not mistaken uh, level two upgrade is incoming for this archery range uh, and mustafa is fighting until the end what an interesting game number two boys what an interesting game number two. And, you know, God Kill the Goblin King is almost level six, which is going to unlock the Poison Stinger. I mean, level 10 is going to be the time for him to shine with the, with the summoning of three Fire Drakes, which is really amazing. And something we barely see. <laughs> Mustafa should go for the King Brand, I guess. Mm, yeah, maybe, but he needs to keep making units all the time, you know. The Warwind Riches was used on this mineshaft here, by the way. It's not like he has so much money, because again, he made so many of these. Oh, he went even for the Lone Tower. That's a mistake, I would say, because um, first of all, the question is, what is this Lone Tower going to do here? You know, can you, even, can you even hold it? That's the main question. Maybe you can pressure him a bit, but that's going to delay your 25 so much. He already went for the Cloud Break after the Man of Deal, and then also for the Lone Tower now. He has 6.5 power points collected, and DJP on the other side has 17. 25 power point advantage is huge, right? If he can summon the dragon here, for example, he can kill everything. Literally everything but the fortress from, uh, from King Mustafa. And that's what I meant. The Lone Tower did absolutely nothing. Maybe, oh, he even commits fully and uses the rebuild. But look how hard those half troll swordmen are hitting. That's what I meant with the double buff of, uh, of the Skull Totem plus the leadership from God Kills the Goblin King. They are murdering this tower in seconds. Crazy, boys. Spiderlings were pressuring all the time. Indeed, they were able to take down so many mineshafts 
from King Mustafa all the time. But he has still 825 command points because of the mine shafts he has here and here at the bottom left side. So he has the corner at the top right and at the bottom left side, pretty much. Going for the attack. Hobbits are also here. The builder is getting taken down from DJ Premier. Giant expansions, tower expansions. The thing is, he's so behind, but he actually keeps getting more power points all the time than DGP, so he might be even able to catch up with the power points. Let's see. The worm is ready, will be used at the bottom side. The towers are gonna be taken down, the double hall of warriors are gonna be taken down. Nice one, cancelling the animation, by the way, that's really important, so he buys more time. Not dealing too much damage to the tower, to be honest. I was expecting a bit more damage. Uh... And if you and the hobbits are murdering this worm, by the way, what the heck? Okay. If he's not paying attention, he's gonna lose the worm here. And he was only able to take down one hall of warriors with that. That's not the best worm summon I've ever seen in my life. But I gotta admit, it's also not the worst one. <laughs> hobbits OPOP. OP. Uh, but on the bright side, he has 22 power points collected, boys. But, you know, 500 CP only against uh, 900 CP from King Mustafa. I don't know, man. He's gonna go for the barrage here. Oh, that's gonna kill all the expansions around the fortress. He can maybe follow up with a Man of Steel. Yes, that's gonna be the case. He's gonna use it on the production buildings, by the way, and not on top of the fortress. Oh, that's really Fiesta right there. Man of Steel is also available. And he has units here from the Hobbit Summon. He has units here. Um, What is happening in this game, boys? I, I want to remind you, if Mustafa wins this game, we are not done yet. We're going to jump still into the game number three. And I don't want to guess what's going to happen because we have already guessed so many times. It was looking good for King Mustafa. It was looking good for DJP. Again for King Mustafa. Again, again for DJP. And now it looks again great for DJ. I mean for King Mustafa. That's crazy. 23 power points collected, but he's losing stuff all the time. The Spiderlings are the only units, they are doing a great job, pressuring the mineshafts all the time. But in the Worm, could be definitely much more successful. Maybe using it at the top right side would be the way to go, because he has this level 3 mineshaft here with the Dwarven Riches. Cloudbreak was used once again, stunning the enemy units. Again, Skull Totem not being used uh, from God Kill the Goblin King. But it's easy to talk when you're not playing, obviously. I think you can also we can also feel the players being exhausted now after such a long game. And obviously the longer the game goes on, the more mistakes they're gonna most likely make. Uh, but the more fiesta it's gonna become. Gorkil is disengaging. I mean Gorkil, when he gets level 10 man, he's gonna be one man army. And you know, he's only two levels away from that, boys. Two levels only. The game isn't over yet and he has summoned dragon. He's gonna use it at the top right side. There he comes, a bad boy. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. The archer range is gonna be the first target. He needs to deal some massive damage now. Protect here, by the way. I mean, taking down the level 3 is really important. That's gonna be also the case. Summon Dragon is the best, by the way, when it comes to take down the structures, in my opinion. Um... But there is obviously almost no reason for you to use it kind of defensively against enemy units. Um, Archers are dealing kind of good damage, but it's not going to be enough to stop him. He's going to lose the second level 3 um, Mineshaft. <clears throat> That's going to finally lower his command points. Not even really, he has still 825 command points and incredible amount of resource income. Where did he go? Is he already gone? Nah, he's gonna be repositioned to deal with the army here from the opponent. Uh, which is okay, because killing those mineshafts, there is not much more to kill. Maybe he could have killed the forge works, but he wanna use them kind of defensively. I have also seen Gloin on the field. Let me check the levels from God Kill the Goblin King. He's level 8, almost a half. Azok, he didn't even revive Azok, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he didn't revive Azok yet. Um, power points are rising and even after the dragon summon from DJ Premier, this game is looking more and more in favor of King Mustafa in the game number 2, which is absolute fiesta. I mean, Scavenger is being helpful, so you keep getting money all the time from killing these enemy units, but as long as you can't take any advantage after that and you're not being able to push him back. And this is the perfect situation to understand that map control is everything in this game, right? Even 
I mean, DJ Premier was literally able to take his down to take down his fortress, but because of the insane amount of map control King Mustafa had, and he was also able to protect and keep alive, and the unit advantage he had. So Mustafa was actually in a situation in which he was not forced to make multiple units. Indeed, he could just save the money for the fortress. Because he had such a great map control and great amount of resource income. Especially from this mineshaft at the bottom left side, which was level 3 for a while. Okay. Um, yeah, full command points for Mustafa now. 525 only. And the dragon is gonna be on a huge cooldown. As well as Worm and Spiders and Men of Deal. I mean, Wildman. On the other side, um, he's getting more and more power points. The, term, the, the Lone Tower is gonna be available again. I mean, he has only one Goblin Cave and one Fissure. That's it. As he spams all the time those half throw Swordsmen, they're also very expensive, as you know. Did he even purchase any upgrades here? Nope, he didn't. He, uh, actually, he purchased the Banner Carry upgrade only. Uh, he can't afford it, obviously. He doesn't have the money he needs. Yielding now the second Fissure. I mean, first of all, you need to make multiple units before you want to upgrade them. Isn't King Dean better choice right now than Gloin because of the fact that he has a lot of units, gives leadership instantly? Yeah, but I would say, um, you know, maybe yeah, but he's winning these fights anyway, you know? And he needs something to siege, like a siege weapon like this one, but also Gloin is like, like a siege most, uh, monster, as you know. And he has King Dean anyway, so he has everything what he needs. Look, he has Gloin and King Dean on the field. I mean, he has all the time and the money he needs for every hero. He can literally make everything. I mean, Gimli can p potentially join the fight as well soon. He's gonna keep spamming those demolishers now. Um, keep up the pressure all the time. Get power points from killing enemy units and structures all the time. And yeah, just keep pressuring, pretty much. Um, yeah, and if this battle wagon can sneak through, we have seen already against Lukat how effective this one, I mean, not battle wagon, this demolisher, how effective one demolisher can actually be and we need to also keep an eye on this king uh, on this client once he's level four he can literally one shot pretty much any structure with the shake foundation or at least still massive amount of damage this tunnel is gonna be taken down first full command points by the way is full command points now for a while for king mustafa um and he's also making a great use of his command points okay this level 3 tunnel is gonna be taken down, one of the few remainings, if not the last one remaining, yeah, that's being the case. The last level 3 tunnel is gonna be taken down from DJ Premier. So, counting this away, I mean, he has still so much command points still. I'm wondering where these command points are coming from. But the fortress is under attack, boys, you can see that, right? Did he deploy? No, he didn't. You need to deploy so you get double armor. So it's gonna he's gonna take way more way less damage from those towers around. He has still 750 command points, but look how you know close those tunnels are to each other. So he's not getting too much value after that. Uh, of that. Um, but what he gets value of is killing those units all the time. You can see from the scavenger ability. He's getting plus seven for each kill on those men of tail. What he can also put, what he, what he could potentially do as well, we are talking about the Dwarf player, he can go for the Sea Chambers, he can go for the upgrades from the Forge Works, for his Guardians. Um, okay, Spider allies defensively. 21 power points collected now from King Mustafa. Cloud Break is available. The Watcher will be used from DJP to defend one of these attacks, but what, what, will, what will you do about the next attack when this is on cooldown? He has not enough units to deal with the army from King Mustafa at this point, boys. Um, and yeah, the dragon... I mean, the worm is gonna be ready soon. With the worm, he might be... He might try to buy the time. Buy some, buy some time for himself. Uh, Men of Deal will be used on those Men of Deal. And look at this, they are also stunned. I didn't even know that. Are the units stunned coming after the Cloud Breaks effect? Yeah, in the, instead, in this case, yeah. I was expecting them to not to not be stunned, if this makes sense. Okay, the worm is gonna be ready. <clears throat> the spider is gonna be gone soon. Did Mustafa actually lose all his heroes? Um, maybe. Yeah, I think so. I don't see any heroes on the field anymore from King Mustafa, boys. I think he lost... 
uh, King Dane and Gloin. I mean, it's not a big deal at this point because he is so ahead. And it's a matter of time. Once he gets 25 power points uh, and he combines that 25 with the Man of the Hill, which is going to be available pretty soon, and the Barrage ability to use it on the Fortress potentially, which is already low, right? Great Battle Rage will be used to take down this Demolisher. Look how much damage he was already able to deal to this Fortress. So if he can combine this with the 25, he doesn't need army. He can kill that fortress literally with ability with uh, power point abilities only. Okay, he's like a little bit more than three power points away from that point. Uh, Azok is level eight, back in the business, but Goblin player has not that many units on the field, nor can he afford to make more units or buy upgrades for those units he has. Just take a look into the minimap guys at the bottom left side. Look at this side of the map. Everything is red. Absolutely. There is not a single purple at the right side on the map for of Eisen. And if this game will be won by King Mustafa, the final game, the tiebreaker, is going to be played on the map Plains of Lindon. And Gloin is back in the business being level 4. Shake Foundation is available. The fortress is already low. Uh, he was already using Barrage and Man of Steel somewhere here, by the way. So he killed almost every remaining unit. Uh, he has 23, almost 24 power points collected. And King Zane is back in the business. Hey, Wolf, Wolf, Wolf Moon forever. Thank you so much for the follow. Worm will be used defensively. Let's see. Men of Tales are dealing incredible amount of damage. Look, the power points are rising from King Mustafa. He might get the power points he needs. There was the Shake Foundation from Gloin, by the way. Azok is hitting level 9. And look at this. God kills the Goblin King. Level 9 and half. Holy moly. But Earthquake will be ready. Can this be enough to take it down? That's the question. And the answer is yes. The Fortress is goners, boys. I would love to see this guy hitting level 10. He's really close. But yet, so far, the Worm is able to deal so much damage from the, to those Wildmen of Dunland. But the Fortress is Scorners and unlike King Mustafa, DJP not being in a situation in which he can reveal the Fortress any soon. And the Fortress means much more in the late game than in the early game. Because now you can't use your Watcher, you can't use your Dragon, you can't use your Spiders, Wildman, you don't have any value of the Cave Pets, Scavenger, Tainted Land and Warchant. I mean, he's so close, guys. Look at this. He needs to kill literally one battle wagon and he would be level 10. Kill some of these men of deal. You, you can't get experience from that, right? He's running for his life. Look how close he is. He would be able to summon three. He was able to enter the mineshaft just in time. That's the last unit he has on the field, by the way, boys. Come on, Mustafa. Give him the chance to get level 10. I would love to see this ability. <laughs> Let's see. King never give up Mustafa. Exactly, man. I mean, there was... Like, you guys told... You guys said GG in the chat, boys. I, I, I know, guys. Don't, don't lie to me now. I was reading so many GGs. This game is over to me and stuff like this. Now you see. Never give up. Never surrender. Because you might be finding a way to come back and win the game. Okay. Oh, God killed the Goblin King has been taken down. Oh, he wanted to get level 10 on those guardians, but the tower was actually able to kill him. <laughs> All right, GG. And the score is going to be 1-1, one, one, ladies and gentlemen. Nice, so. The game number 3, after this incredible game number 2, boys, is going to be played on the map Plains of Lindon. It's going to be a Dwarven Mirror. A lot of guardians on the field. And I don't mind mirrors from time to time. Um... And I think playing a mirror on a neutral host proves who is the better dwarf player in this situation. And also dwarf mirror is something we don't usually usually see that often, right? We see alvin mirrors, goblin mirrors, but dwarven mirror? Let's see. At the bot side we have the purple dwarf player DJ Premier and his opponent is the red dwarf player King Mustafa. This is the map Plains of Lindon in the game number 3 in the group stage for the world championship. Uh, Mustafa was able to win already 2-0 against Lukat, so the fact that he was already able to win now one game against DGP means a lot, and that's going to increase his chances uh, to reach to the next stage. But it's not going to guarantee it. If it's going to guarantee it, however, if he wins now the second game against DGP. With that, he will have 4 wins in total. 
That means even if he loses against the last member in the group, he will be in a really great situation Vulcan and he will most likely... For 10 months. Ahoy. Vulcan is coming in clash with 10 months. 10 months, my friend. Wait a second, wait a second. No, 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 no. That's not 10 months. That's a tier 3 sub from Vulcan. Tier 3 sub from Vulcan. That is incredible. Vulcan, my friend, you are dope. Thank you so much for the tier 3. Balrog all over the place, boys. Thank you, thank you. Means a lot to me. Lambo, you can't do it. <laughs> all right. I see two, three mineshafts into the forge works from King Mustafa. Already something different. I mean, when was the last time we have seen a forge work start from a dwarf player? And at the bot side, we have a normal start. Two mineshafts into the Hall of Warriors. Pikeman, I think he's going to go for the creep here. The troll creep at the bottom right side. So I can already see it coming. I think Mustafa is gonna make many, many battle wagons with the Man of Steel upgrade on them. Turkish man in Germany is Mirful. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Turkish man in Berlin. No, it's not Berlin, but you know, you know the song, right? I'm an English man in New York. Okay. So. I see a uh, Hall of Warriors coming up already now for King Mustafa, but it's gonna be a battle wagon start. It might be a battle wagon demolish, which I think is gonna be the case. Let's see. On the bright side, uh, DJP is gonna be able to capture this troll cage at the bottom right side and then also make some hobbits from this inn, which is gonna give him some advantage because he can also pressure now from this side. Yulda is here from Mustafa, scouting the area. Men of Tail. Not gonna demolish the uh, forge works, by the way. He's gonna keep it alive. And I'm assuming he's gonna go for the man of steel. He's waiting for the money. He has the money now. Is he gonna go for it? That's the question. Let's see. Yeah, it's gonna go for it. All right, man of steel on battle wagons. But on the right side for DJP, he's creeping now the second creep already on the left side. So two creeps against none. And this is a risky play. So sometimes you make a mistake. With this battle wagon, you run you run into them, kind of, right? And then you are screwed. You are being doomed from this moment. But look the damage they are dealing to this pikeman, actually. That's crazy, right? Look at this. But he will be able to take down, uh, to enter the mineshaft just in time. And the fact that they are level 2 is actually great. So he will be recovering over time. Anyway, uh, some with uh, same with those guardian units here. From DJ Premier. Uh, we have now more guardians coming. Also here, we're gonna get some pikemen. Hobbits. Incoming. <laughs> okay, boys. He's gonna make enough wagon wagons for whole paint rain. Uh, yeah, the second one is already on the way. You might be right. <laughs> Booker is going crazy. Okay, we have King Brand now on the field from DGP. That actually, uh, King Brand is actually a great choice against the battle wagon, so you can keep shooting them all the time from a safe distance and force them to retreat. There is a mineshaft also from the from the dwarf player DJ Premier, so you can go for an attack. I mean, this battle wagon is still doing a great job. Look how many units he's able to kill. King Brand has to focus him down, and he's dealing significant amount of damage. You can see that, but he has luckily a mineshaft. He will be able to enter. And that's what I meant before. So he will constantly shoot down this battle wagon and eventually be enough, you know, be eventually dealing enough damage to force him back all the time. Okay. 550 command points for DGP, 450 for King Mustafa. Battle wagon has to be very careful in this situation. He's playing very risky. Oil barrel will be used. Rallying call also will be used from King Mustafa. The damage is good. He needs to peel back a bit. You don't want to fight against the spikeman in melee range. He has hobbits on the v uh, he has hobbits on the field now. This mineshaft is gonna be taken down anyway, and King Mustafa is building the first tower. Um, Wagon is still being on the field. Is he gonna try to protect this tower? I mean, you don't you want to be careful. Does he even have heal? That's the question. He doesn't, so he needs to really run away now. Slam shot maybe? Oh, okay. I don't know how much damage slam shot is gonna be able to deal. We know it's not like a single target powerful attack, like Wounding Arrow, for example, is or extra, but it's like more like a splash damage kind of thing, right? I mean, Wounding Arrow is also kinda or extra is also kinda, but this is not meant to deal damage to a single target, I would say, unlike the Beast Slayer Arrow 
Okay, the Forge Works is gonna get demolished now. I think he makes now three Battle Wagons in total. Uh, the good thing is for DJP, he has now his buff still available, so he has the buff advantage, but he needs to move now. He keeps losing units all the time here to the battle wagons, he has three of these now, boys. He's gonna micro around all the time. Uh, luckily for DJP, he has five and a half power points collected, can go for the heal, and he has the buff advantage again. That's gonna be huge, this attack is gonna hurt big time. He has enough pikemen around, that means these battle wagons, they can only shoot from a safe distance, they can never be able to commit to that fight by trampling down the enemy units. And he needs desperately heal, he is still 3 power points away from that, so this risky start from King Mustafa may not work out against DJ Premier, who has, by the way, 650 command points against 450. Okay, oil bottle will be used on the ground, deals damage over time as we know, forcing DJP to retreat. At this point, you want to play a bit more patient. Okay. Triple battle wagon still on the field. He was also able to creep this troll layer before and this work layer at the left side. This work layer is still around, as well as the troll layer at the top left side. Building now the second hall of warriors. I like the way that DJP is playing that slowly, patient, you know, fighting for the map control, making sure he has mine shafts all over the place, taking down the creeps, just why not? Snowball your lead, because the last thing what you need at this point is making a huge mistake that can cost you the game. I mean, uh, these are the only win condition from King Mustafa, and he needs to desperately try to keep them, all three of them alive. Remember, he was demolishing the forge works, so he can't make any more of these. And he went for Man of Deal on every single one of them. He has no banner carrier upgrade for a potential double buff action. Riding Call is being used on those units. It's gonna be almost available for King Mustafa, though the builder... What is the builder doing here? I don't know what his builder is... Oh my god, the builder was running it down for some reason. The builder has been taken down, he needs to make another one. They cost uh, 500 each, they are quite expensive. Uh, he's being surrounded. Uh, Riding Call was used on the Man of Deal. But he can't approach, that's what I meant. How, how impactful this King Brand actually is, as you can see. Finally, he was used. Is he gonna commit to this King Brand? That's the question. It looks like it. The Man of Deal are dealing significant amount of damage, but there is a Mineshaft and Pikemen are coming. Oh, he needs to be careful. He's running for his life now. Heal is available anyway. He wanted to beat him. During all this time, he's gonna lose the Hall of Warriors here. The attack continues. We have 875 command points for DJP against 350 command points only for King Mustafa. I appreciate the start. Seeing something different is always nice. But they didn't have as much impact as he would like them to have. And King Brand was just out in time. Uh, without the King Brand, they could just lurk around all the time. And they could kill enemy units from a safe distance. And that's, I think, one of the best counters you can actually get on the field against the enemy battle wagon. So, if you are playing Man of the West, Faramir could do the same thing. You know, if you are playing against Elves, Haldir can do the same thing all the time. Eomir can do this. With the spear throw, with chasing them down all the time. Okay, creeping now at the top left side. K King Brand is level 3, by the way. I mean, the battle wagons, don't get me wrong, they are doing a great job. Look how many units they are able to kill all the time. But you can't fight for the map control with them. They're gonna need ages to take down one mineshaft. And as he lost many of these mineshafts and even one of his Hall of Warriors, he has not many units beside those three battle wagons. He's gonna need ages uh, to get the map control back. Because he needs to defend himself once again. The builder is under attack. He already lost one of these builders. That's a huge army from DJP. And yeah, let's see. Dwarf has advantage in this matchup though. <laughs> exactly, Dwarf. I think the Dwarf play is gonna win, boys. <laughs> okay, he's building wall hubs around the fortress to kinda protect it against those melee units. But is this gonna be really enough? I mean, at this point, what he can do is just buy the Siege Hammers on those Guardians. Put army also in the middle of the map, beating down those uh, Guardians. The last Guardian Battalion from King Mustafa. Battle Wagons are still doing a great job. And he's also being able to keep them alive all the time, which is really important, as you know. Oh, be careful here. 
Oil bottle will be used, be risky, risky play. Fire on the ground, deals damage over time. But, you know, DJP is gonna be able... Okay, Slamshot is not dealing that much damage. Slamshot is actually dealing as much damage as like one hit from a basic attack, right? Almost. A bit more maybe, but not much more. Uh, DJP has almost 10 power points now. Uh, I've been told that you can't use Undermine underneath of the Battle Wagons, if I'm not mistaken, when they have the Man of Deal. I might be wrong, guys. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, he's gonna go for the Rebuild. Okay. Uh, that's what people told me. That when you pick Undermine now in the situation from DJP and you wanna use it on the Battle Wagons, it's not gonna work. Because you can't for some reason knock them up or something. I don't know why. Okay. 350 command points for King Mustafa. He has nothing left, obviously. There's like one, two mine shafts all around the place. That's it. Uh, but those men of, those uh, battle wagons are getting more and more experience all the time. One of them is even level 4. Two of them are level 4. One of them is level 3. So he keeps killing stuff. But there is no follow-up, you know. You kill enemy units. You don't have anything to punish him afterwards. You don't have anything to take down his structures afterwards. Okay. I mean, King Brand should be just chasing them down, kinda, I would say. It's the best way to go. Uh, Rebuild is available. Full command points for DJ Premier in the game number 3. This game is a bit laggy, that's true. Unlike the other two games. Mustafa has now almost 10 power points as well. Is he gonna go for the Hobbits or is he gonna go for the Undermine? That is the question. I think Undermine can be... put. Potentially a great choice. Imagine how many units he has here. So you use Undermine. I think you can do a great job. Let's see what he's gonna go go for. I think Hobbit's gonna do any not gonna do anything in this situation. I would go for Undermine. I, I would like to see Undermine here. Yes, you might be you might not be able to one-shot them, but again, what are Hobbits gonna do for you in this situation? You know what I'm saying? He's gonna use Rallying Call now. There we go, Rallying Call was used. I mean, DJP has to just focus on the structures, which is being the case. Clumping against the Hall of Warriors, bursting it down within seconds. The Mineshaft is gonna be taken down next. The power points from King Mustafa are dropping very low. He can't do anything ab about them. Oh, he's, he might be in trouble here with this battle wagon. All it takes is like two hits and then you're gonna lose him. He's building a tower defensively. Trying his hardest to defend himself. Hobbits are damaging this battle wagon, but they are not. They are actually dealing okay. They are dealing a lot of damage. Okay, I take it back. They are bursting it down like in seconds. Um, yeah, he has a level two archer range, but almost no money. And the game is freezing now. If the game, if someone DCs at this point, I think you know if something happens and we can't continue the game anymore. Um, then we need to kind of agree that DJP won this game. I don't see King Mustafa being able to come back from this anymore. You know what I'm saying? He's so behind. I mean, yeah, you can argue with me and say, yeah, he was also behind last game, but not that much. <laughs> it, bro, I can't play. Okay, it's over soon. <laughs> okay, he has Demolishers coming. Two of them. At the same time, is revealed ability available for Mustafa? He doesn't even have it, but he has the power points to get to get it if he wants to. But he can't oh, undermine. Okay, it knocks them down. All right, or up in this case, knock them up. There is a level five one. He didn't deal that much damage and dis didn't disable them also for a long time. Rebuild was picked, but look at the damage from those demolishers, and you can't you can't commit to that. You can't really go there and try to take them down again. Uh, you know, those kind of units like battle wagons, they are not good against this kind of units like siege weapons. You know what I'm saying? Go fix your connection. The fortress is gonna be taken down. This time, unlike in the last game, he has no money to be able to replace the fortress he had. The mineshaft has been taken down. He has only two more mineshafts left. Uh, three, more, three more mineshafts left, I think. That's all he got. Now the army is coming. King Brand is also here. I mean, we need to give credits to King Mustafa. He was able to keep all his battle wagons alive. Two of them are even level 5, which is the maximum rank, as you know, for normal units. 
only heroes and those mini hero units like, I don't know, Black Riders for, for example, are able to hit level 10. Level 5 is a huge power spike because you can't get affected also from stunning abilities like, for example, uh, Cloud Break. You can't get stunned anymore once you are level 5. Okay. King Mustafa is fighting until the end. I mean, losing that series doesn't matter that much for King Mustafa. Because, again, he won already two games against Lukat. Great series. The game number three could be a bit better. But the game number two was fantastic.